Welcome to Get Creative. Happy Sunday. Appreciate you guys tremendously. Thank you. Thank you. Today, we're going to talk about something that is one of the best ways to make money in any business. The connector. The connector is unfreaking believable. The problem is people don't understand how it works. And so tonight, we're going to talk about how it works. Another thing that's a problem is a lot of people don't know other people that are making money as a connector. In my career, heavy real estate last seven years, I have met probably 15 people that knew they were born connectors. They just knew it. And not only did they know that they were a born connector, but they knew exactly what to do to monetize, meaning make money generate income from being a connector. I know a lot of people that I look at and I say, you're a connector. You are meant to be a connector. You are such a great fit for that specific avatar. And they go, yeah, I've been told that or I feel that way, but I don't know how to make money from it. The problem with the connector is that the connector's job is to connect two or more people together and to monetize off of that relationship that is created from the connector. And the issue with that is that the connector is such a kind-hearted person. They go out of their way to connect two people, and they do not set the tone. They do not set the expectation that the connector should be making money on that transaction. In fact, they feel guilty because it's such an easy thing to do that they feel guilty connecting two people and making money from doing so. So let me give you a few examples of a connector, okay? Here's a few examples of a connector. Myself, my own life, this is a great story. You guys will hear me talk about it a hundred times. Myself. Good to see everybody in here, by the way. Thank you guys for showing up tonight. The connector. Here's a story that you cannot make up. I'm at a meetup in Utah, 2021. And I'm standing here. There's a table in a meetup. There's a big room that I'm in. And there's hundreds of people, okay? Hundreds of people. Not hundreds, but maybe like 100, somewhere between 80 and 100 people, okay? So there's a lot of chatter going on and whatnot. And I'm talking to a guy on my right-hand side. And I ask him, a great question. The question you should be asking all the time. I ask, what do you have? And what do you need? If you ask those two questions to every single person you meet at a real estate meetup, you will make a lot of money. So I asked this gentleman here, what do you have and what do you need? His response to me is, Pace, I have a 42-acre development, and I need $1 million to complete it. I say, okay, well, I don't have a million dollars, which I rarely ever do. My money is always tied up in deals. But if I could find you that $1 million, would you mind if I make money or become a partner in the deal. Now, of course, I'm always looking for ways to learn. I, I want to learn what that 42-acre development looks like. I want to learn, why did you need a million dollars? And he says, yes, absolutely. If you could bring that million dollars to the table, I would absolutely cut you in on the deal, make you a partner, depending on what you want. If you want some today money, I could figure that out. But if you don't want to get paid right now, I'll make you a 3% partner on the deal. Great. So I literally, this is a guy standing to my right. I literally say, okay, I'm going to go find your $1 million. Okay. And so I say, I'm going to meet the next person. So I shift to my left. I don't even move. I stay in the same location I'm in standing in the same exact space. And I say, what do you have? And what do you need? 
And the answer from this gentleman, his name is Jody Evans. Some of you guys will know Jody Evans. He is in the Sub2 community. Jody Evans says, oh, wh what do I have and what do I need? Well, I have $1 million and I need a place to, pl uh, to put it. And I have two weeks to do it unless I want a big tax bill. Now, for some of you guys that are experienced in real estate, you'll know that Jody was uh, having an issue with a 1031 exchange where he had to put that million dollars into an investment or he was going to be taxed on that million dollars at a very, very high rate. So I was like, this has got to be a joke. How are these two people literally standing next to each other within now, you know, this gentleman has now turned to his right. He started talking to somebody else who was right. But how is it that Jody and this gentleman did not know each other? They were literally right next to my, on my right and on my left. Now, Ingrid, she just made a comment and said that she loves Jody and his Josh, son, Josh. This just tells you I'm not making these characters up and I'm not making this story up. Okay. You can talk to Jody Evans. He will tell you that this is exactly what happened. So what I do is I go to Jody and I say, do you mind if I make money on the transaction or become a partner by introducing you to somebody who could use that million dollars? And Jody says, absolutely not. That'd be, that'd be perfectly fine with me. So I step back and I grab both these people and I say, you two need to meet. Boom. That was it. I did my entire job. Now, Jody Evans, I don't know the exact amount of money he's going to make, but I know that from his $1 million investment, I believe that's going to turn into $4 million. So he's going to make a great amount of money. And Pace, who had $0 in the deal, by the time the deal is all the way said and done, I will make about $1.8 million just connecting the dots. Now, there's another part to this. It's very interesting. Not to this story. The story is great. Um, it is a 42-acre development that I've been a part of because I just connected two people. There are people that their entire business model is just connecting other people. I was sitting down to dinner last night with one of my students. We have done probably 15 deals together, 15 real estate deals together. And I told him my gator business is taking off and I need somebody to come in and partner with me on my gator business. And I, you know, having dinner with him, sitting down. It was interesting having these conversations. He's very young. He's 22 years old. His biggest problem right now, by the way, side note, his biggest problem now is that he's comfortable. He has never made so much money in the last, um, let's say it's May. So in the last five months, he's generated about, uh, let's see, $150,000 in um, profit for himself. And, that, that, and then he's generated another $150,000 for his partners who have JV'd with him. Okay, what he's doing is he's finding sub two and seller finance deals and he's selling them to people like myself and other people, and he's making an assignment fee. So in the last five months, my student, 22-year-old kid, no license, no experience, just barely moved out of his parents' house, has made $150,000. He is on track this year to make somewhere between five hundred dollars and $600,000. His problem is comfort. He's never had so much money in his life. And now he's got fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 sitting in his bank account, money sitting in his bank account, and therefore he is not working. This is what happens. Comfort sets in. And I said, we got to get you uncomfortable. We got to have you investing this money. We got to have you doing these other things. He says, I don't know, man, I need a new challenge. So he's not going to get shiny object syndrome. I'm not going to let him um, disconnect from the deals he's doing. I'm currently teaching him how to automate that business and 
put that into place where somebody else is running his assignment business and somebody else is running his gator business. Okay. Once he's automated, he says, what should I do? What should be my next challenge? And I said, you need to become a connector. Because as a connector, not only can you make assignment fees, okay? You can also do a lot of gator deals or gator wrestling as we call it. And he says, oh yeah, just in the last couple of months, I've made $30,000 only connecting somebody who needs money to somebody who has money and I'm in the middle making about $1,500 on the relationship. I say, perfect, are you controlling these relationships? His answer is no. And so what he's done is he's created a world, okay? He's created a world where he's passing the valuable relationships off to each other and he is being removed from the equation because they are seeing he's making $1,500. And so there's a way to be a connector to obviously make money by connecting two parties together, okay? However, if you are just passing these relationships off, you are going to lose these relationships. Human beings will naturally, it's not their fault, they, they believe that they've paid you. They believe, hey, you got paid $1,500 on connecting this relationship. The problem is, how do you continually make money on that same exact relationships? Well, it comes down to agreements, okay? Comes down to written agreements, which we will not cover tonight, okay? Capital Investment says, I do that constantly. This is called gator wrestling, okay? Tanisha says, I just partnered with someone to be a connector for gator funding. There you go. This is... An entire industry that I created was the Gator Tribe. But there are agreements that need to be put in place, not just for Gator lending, but also for doing JV deals, assignments, okay? Even private money referrals, okay? If you're referring a private money partner to somebody else, you should be leveraging and getting equity or getting some sort of kickback. Now, there's other things you can do, okay? You're going to make, be able to make money on assignments. You'll make money on gator wrestling. You'll make money on referring private money lenders. You can also get equity in people's deals. Okay. This is one of my favorite things to do. It's because it's not today money, but it is much larger chunks of money by leveraging yourself into other people's equity deals. Now, what you're asking is something very interesting. All you're asking is what do you have and what do you need? What do you have and what do you need? What do you have and what do you need? Now, in this relationship, I'm sitting here at dinner last night with this young man, one of probably a good thousand students of mine this year that will make probably half a million dollars or more just in assignment fees, okay? It's not uncommon, it's very common. But what's special about this kid is he's 22 years old and he was afraid of his own shadow two years ago. I forced him to move out of his parents' house, told him to get out of the state where his parents were living, to get out of his comfort zone, which is what a good mentor does. Pushes, 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 pushes. So what's special about this young man is that now he's followed instructions, he's taken action, and he's making the money that he was told he could make. In fact, he's making a little bit more but he wants a new challenge. So what I told him is I said, here's what I would do. I would, A, he is, an, he is both a sub two student and he is also a Gator tribe member. I said, here's what I would do. It's very simple. I would create a sheet. This can be a Google sheet. And I would make a goal of talking to five new people per day whether that's in sub two or gator. Why sub two and why gator? Well, because I know that uh, the people in sub two are highly trained. They have continued education for the rest of their lives. They're highly connected. It is the only true community in real estate. Why do I want to connect with people in gator? Well, because they're the only ones that get lines of credit. Okay. The whole point of gator is that you have a line of credit that comes with your 
uh, part of being in the Gator Tribe. And so there is over, my understanding, $50 million currently inside of Gator that has come from lines of credit and even more to well, way, 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 way more to come. So I, I says, I say, look at this. If I connected with five sub two students on Monday, Thursday, and Friday, and I connected with five uh, Gator students on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday, I'm going to create every single month, or I'm sorry, every single week, I'm going to create 30 new relationships. Now, this is a lot. It is physically impossible for me to go and create 30 new relationships and not capitalize on one of those relationships on a weekly basis. The problem is what most people are doing is they are trying to become friends with these people. I don't know about you guys, but I want to become friends with people I make money with. So the main focal point of the conversation should be focused on monetization and then becoming friends. You should always be friendly. You should always be uh, looking to build stronger rapport. But the focal point of the conversation should be all about generating income. So what I would do is I would create a Google Sheet. And I would have their name. I would have the city that they're connected in. I would have their main business model. And I would have what they have and what they need. Now, what they have, I'll give you a couple of examples. Okay, what they have is they might have, it might be somebody says, I have a lot of leads and I need an acquisition person. Ooh, that's easy. Because out of these 30 people that you talk to, you don't think you are gonna talk to one person that's gonna say, I'm really good at closing, but I have no leads. This is just one of a thousand examples I could give you, okay? You will 100%, okay? Now, My Myron Briley says, I'm making this sheet right now. Out of all the people I've known in the last couple of years, I would have assumed that Myron Briley would have already had this sheet. He should have a sheet of everybody he talks to, sub two or gator. And what you're looking for when people, when you're looking for what they have is what resource do they have? Okay, you're going to ask them, well, do you have any private money? Do you have the ability to lend money on a deal? Do you have $5,000? Do you have $10,000? Okay, do you have $200,000? What is it that you have so that if I find a really good deal, I can point you in the direction for that deal because it sounds like what you need is a deal. Okay. Joel says, this is the beautiful thing about sub two and the beautiful thing about Gator Tribe is that there is truly a tremendous amount of money sitting on the sidelines for people who are intentional about utilizing it properly. So one thing that you can be looking for is every day, what do you have? What do you need? Now, I'm going to give you guys some advice. Make sure that when you are having conversations with people, you also tell people what you have and what you need. If you are a connector, this is what you say. When somebody says, well, what do you have? Let's say I'm Myron, okay? What, let's say that I'm Myron and somebody asks me, hey, Myron, what do you have? And I am Myron the connector. My answer to that is I have all the best connections in sub two, and Gator. I have all the best connections in sub two and Gator. And what I need is to bring those connections what they need. Imagine every single person you talk to, you say, what's your buy box? Are you trying to wholesale? Okay. Are you trying to um, buy a business? Are you trying to hire acquisition people? Are you looking for a transaction coordinator? 
What exactly are you looking for? Okay. Bazir Arya says, you don't have to write everything you say. Bazir, thank you so much for teaching me how to run a live. I appreciate you. I'm sure that you've ran a lot of them. I'm sure you're very good at this. Thank you so much for your feedback. So, you should be answering the question of, I have all the best connections in Sub2 and Gator. And I'm trying to bring those connections exactly what they need. And what you're going to find is after a while, there is a pattern. And now I feel like every single word I say, I'm going to make sure I write it down just to bother the engineer, the obvious engineer that cannot handle things when I write things down. What's so great is there's always somebody that says, Pace, thank you for writing things down. Thank you for, for using the whiteboard today. There's always, it's always an engineer. It's always some, somebody with an uh, engineer name. Okay? So, there's going to be a pattern. The pattern is going to be one of probably 20 things. Okay, you're going to find people that need private money lenders. Ding, ding, ding. That's easy. You're going to find, and then you're going to find the opposite of that. You're going to find people who are private money lenders. You're going to find people that need private money partners. And then you're going to find people who are looking to be private money partners. You will find people that are looking for acquisition reps. And then you will find people that are focusing on becoming acquisition reps. You'll find people that say, I'm looking for a great contractor in Mesa, Arizona. And you will then be able to find somebody who has a great contractor. Now, you can sit here, and I could go through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of examples of this. Way more examples of this. Okay, in fact, why don't you guys come up with a couple of good examples of things that people will have and things that people will need. Now, Joel uh, Shilpi says, isn't the astro flipping model just for that? I've seen acquisition wholesalers connecting dispo wholesalers and boom, making money. Yeah, that's um, exactly what we're talking about. It's one of maybe a hundred things that you should be doing as a connector. Okay. You're going to find people that have projects, okay? And you're going to find people that manage projects. I'll tell you a couple of names that I know do this incredibly well. There's a gentleman named Matt Andrews. He runs a mastermind, okay? The name of the mastermind is the Family Mastermind. Most of you guys don't know who that is because he doesn't need you to know who he is. He finds specific people that fit the list of all the other people he knows, and he goes, goes out and seeks and destroys, and he makes all his entire income off referring people to each other and making sure that he's in the middle of that relationship, monetizing, and he's the guy going around the country meeting every single person. He makes millions of dollars Doing what? Making friends. Now, the challenge is I tell people, go and network. Okay. And they think of it as, man, that sounds like a job. Well, if it sounds like a job, that's probably not your avatar. If you don't enjoy getting to, to know people naturally, then that's probably not your avatar. The avatar you should be focusing on is maybe being a, I don't know, an engineer at Motorola. And having a nine to five job for the rest of your life and critiquing people in the side comments about how they write things on their whiteboard. That's probably a better job fit for you. But if you're somebody who's saying, I really enjoy getting to know other people, I like hearing the story of where they came from. I like hearing the story and listening to the vision of what they have for themselves in the future. If you're that person, 
you should be making hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, making connections from one person to another person. It's simple. Think about it from an HR perspective. You know there's companies out there that are recruiters, okay? There are companies out there that literally are headhunters. We hire them. We hire recruiting companies. We call, call, uh, hire HR companies. Think about, this is a great example. Why don't we do this? There are companies that do this entirely as their business model. Okay, maybe Upwork would be a good example of this. Or how about, here's a really simple one. What if you go to care.com? A lot of people don't even know that something like this exists. Over 4 million families have used care.com. What are they looking for? Child care, senior care, housekeeping, pet care, tutoring. They literally just make money on connecting people that didn't already know each other. That's it. That's it. Now, they're making millions of dollars on a platform. Obviously, this is scalable. But in your own individual real estate business, lending business, acquisition business, fix and flip business, whatever it may be, you can make larger chunks of money than a simple care.com. So when people say, oh, this seems hard or this doesn't seem like something that happens, guys, this is happening every single day and you are dealing with it and paying people for it every single day. Think about this. What is Amazon other than a connector? You have bought from Amazon in the last 30 days, I'm sure of it. What is Walmart other than a connector? What is Kirkland Signature other than a connector? They're bringing the buyers and the sellers together and they are making a connection fee. That's all this is. It's arbitrage. It is wholesaling. It is wholesaling way more than just deals. It's wholesaling resources. It's wholesaling human capital, human resources. It is unbelievable the kind of money that you can make. Okay, so Sequoia says, I love getting to know people. Okay, now Dallas Bell says Amazon is an ecosystem. Yep, they are. Okay, but why do people not just know you, Dallas Bell, as somebody that I can rely on for anything I need. Do you know how many people reach out to me? Now, this is the great thing about being a connector. I could talk about this for hours. Is do I have to monetize on every single referral that I do? No, but I do monetize on a lot of my referrals. The ones that I choose not to rely on, or I'm sorry, monetize on, are the ones that I am waiting for a much larger score because the person that I am referring them to or referring them from has something much larger than this one little transaction can give me. And so I go, hey, would love to do more with you. Let this be a token of showing you how interested I am in doing more business with you. Now, I'll give you a couple of examples. I connected Dean Graziosi and Cody Sanchez together the other day. They did not know each other, but they wanted to know each other. Now, did I need to monetize on that relationship immediately? No, but at some point, I will have a business idea for Cody or for Dean Graziosi, and because I've led with value and given them something, something of my resources, the likelihood of us doing something together to make money together is much more significant. Now, that's one, of, one example of 100. But I can tell you 90% of the time that I'm referring somebody to somebody else, I am asking the question of how can I make money in this transaction? How can I make money in this transaction? If it's a deal, that's pretty obvious, right? I can make a portion of the assignment fee. If it's a gator transaction, same thing. I can make a portion of the transaction fee, of the, of the bump or the chunk of money that is made on that transaction. If it's a deal... Well, I can cut myself into equity, can't I? That's pretty simple. What about an acquisition person? I think that gets a little bit more challenging. What about when a company, like let's say myself. Ooh, this is a good idea. This is a good thought. Let me tell you guys, when I hired Molly, a lot of you guys know Molly, my COO. When I hired Molly, I put on my Instagram, I will pay a $10,000 referral fee 
if somebody could find me somebody that I end up hiring and keeping around for 90 days. So think about this. If you knew 30 or 40 acquisition people or people that were aspiring to become acquisition people, and you knew 10, 15 people looking for acquisition people, could you not just say, hey, if I bring you a great acquisition person, I'd like to put an agreement together that states I get to make money on the first 10 transactions that that acquisition person does for your business. I just made that up. It could be seven and a half transactions. It could be 42 transactions. Whatever it is that you can negotiate, you bring an acquisition person to an acquisition company, don't you deserve a headhunter fee? Don't you deserve to be part of a transaction, two transactions, 10 transactions, what have you? Pretty simple. Set the expectation. Tell people what you want, okay? This is where you can make a lot of money, okay? Myron says, that's dope. Brenda says, I'm a recruiter for Apple. They have entire departments in their companies, okay? She's not just one recruiter. I bet you that Apple has a 1,000 recruiters, maybe even more than a 1,000 recruiters across the, across the globe, Think about how important human resources are. And so the idea, okay, here we go. Jody Evans, back to the very beginning of what we talked about. He says, Pace bailed me out of a very difficult situation. And I was stressed out. He didn't even know, but he saved me. And I'll always be forever grateful for his help. No better mentor out there. Jody has become a friend of mine. I love this man. I'm glad that uh, we were able to avoid some tax implications, Okay which is very cool, but just shows you guys that connecting people can save people. Jody Evans right here on the screen saying, Pace bailed me. That was where I connected Jody Evans to somebody to, he could invest his million dollars into. Not made up. I literally, this was at a, a meetup. It's happened at a meetup, okay? So, this is great. A lot of people are liking this. Thank you so much. Okay, so that's a great idea where a lot of people don't realize. Okay, a lot of people don't realize that even just an acquisition person, okay, an acquisition person being referred to an acquisition company, you could structure it in a way where you could say, I want to be paid $1,000 on every deal they do for the next six months. I want to be paid. Here's how you do it. Okay, let's say Myron calls me up and he goes, Pace, I'm looking for an acquisition person. And I go, no problem. If I find you an acquisition person, I'm going to bring an agreement to you that states that for the next six months, I get paid $1,000 on every transaction that they close for your team. Does that sound fair before I go and look for an acquisition person for you? Expectation set, contract signed, go and find that person. Chances are, if you're a great connector, you already have that person. In fact, you have a list of those people and you're just waiting. And it's not you're not waiting because you're smart, right? Connectors are smart. You're going, look at all these resources I have. I got to plug these resources into where they are, okay? Whether it's a transaction coordinator, an operations manager, a Facebook manager, a social media manager, whatever resource of human labor somebody else needs, you can monetize on it. I'll give you a great example. Check this out. Wow, this is, a, this is a great example. I can't believe I didn't even bring this up. There's a company called bullpenre, okay, dot com. Bullpenre, I'm going to pull it up right now, so be patient. One of you engineers with an Android is losing their mind because I said, let me show you, and the screen is not currently shared. Bullpenre.com, okay? So if I go in here, and I say, I want to hire a um, top analyst for multifamily, okay? They'll ask you, what are you looking for? Acquisitions, private equity, brokerage, capital markets, lending, consulting, development, insurance, other. And you'll go through, okay, let's go to acquisitions, private equity. How many, I'm a solopreneur, okay, cool. What type of expert do you need? I need um, investor relations, okay? Somebody help me, under, help, actually, the uh, one I clicked on earlier was not investor relations. I don't need investor relations. I needed 
underwriting. This is how I hired Bo. This is how I found Bo as bullpen RE. I wrote, I need, uh, actually, no, I, I said uh, full time. Almost done. What's your first name? Pace. Okay, I'm not going to finish this, but do you know how much I pay bullpen RE per month for one employee that I hired? I pay bullpen RE, I think $4,000 a month on top of Bo's salary. Bo's salary is very high. He's a top analyst, very, very experienced. And I pay somewhere around $15,000. You know what's funny? I couldn't find that person without going to bullpen RE because there was no connector that would have connected that person to me. Imagine if you said, Pace, I have a great underwriter. Can you pay me $2,500 a month for the, you know how long I'm going to pay bullpen RE, by the way? This is common practice. This isn't like one example. I could give you a thousand examples of this. This is happening all the time. Bullpen RE will make $4,500 a month for the next 12 months for that one relationship that I have with Bo. Now, I'm paying for Bo as an underwriter as a bonus for the sub two community, he underwrites their deals twice a day, two hours in the morning, two hours at night. That costs me roughly $18,000 a month to have Bo on my payroll. But that $18,000 doesn't go to Bo. It goes, 100% of it goes to Bullpen RE, and then they pay uh, Bo whatever their fee is. They remove their fee and they pay him the rest. I don't know what he gets paid. Now, that's one relationship that they will make forty-five to sixty thousand dollars in one year off of that referral. This is an entire business model, and you guys think that when I tell you inside of the Sub Two community and the Gator Tribe, make sure you're communicating with every new student that comes in. You think I don't know what you think. You think that I'm doing it for my own benefit, my own health. Absolutely not. I'm trying to teach you how to connect with other human beings. Your net work is your net worth. Either the statue or the stature of the people on your network or the quantity of people on your network will determine your net worth. Your ability to connect people and have the expectation of, hey, I took the time to connect with every single student that came through sub two. I took, with, I took the time to connect with every single Gator and ask them, what do you have? What do you need? What are you looking for? What can I bring to you? And you come from a place of servitude. But guess what? The four seasons is all about service. They provide a wonderful experience at a wonderful, a wonderful price for them. And you know what's funny is I'm happy to pay it. If you bring me something of value, I am more than happy to pay for it. So as long as the expectation is bring me an acquisition person and I'll pay you $1,000 a month for the first six months they work for me, boom, the expectation set. Put a brief agreement together, even if it's in just an email, and put the things in writing. Okay. It is crazy to me. Okay. It is crazy to me that people think that they will be successful as an island in this business. You will not be successful as an island. The most valuable thing I ever did was not build a mentorship. The most valuable thing I did in real estate was to build the sub two community and I followed it up with the Gator Tribe. And the reason for building the Gator Tribe is because I wanted to infuse a tremendous amount of capital into the real estate market. The sub two students were out there getting deals, cash deals, creative deals, single family homes, multifamily, RV parks, land, all sorts of stuff. And they were constantly running into a shortage of private money. And I said, hmm, what could I do so I went to my friends at PCS and I said, how can you guys help a tribe of people go out and get massive lines of credit so that they can bring that money to the sub two community and they could collaborate and do a ton of deals together because one side is bringing $50 million and the other side is bringing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals. 
So I went out and I built the Gator Tribe. And the Gator Tribe now has um, a few thousand people in it that are all going out and getting lines of credit. They don't just have to lend money on EMD. They can lend money on any type of real estate transaction. Hell, they can lend money on just about anything they can imagine. They're being given credit cards at 0% interest for 24 months. They're being given actual lines of credit. My line of credit with PCS now, my personal line of credit is at half a million dollars within 18 months. Think about the Gators. Get to know the Gators. Get to know the sub two students. They are trained. They have 30 Zooms a week on different varying topics. You need to know these people and you need to have a spreadsheet of your conversations. You need to divide them by state. And every time you get a hold of somebody else from Georgia, you look at your Georgia tab on your list and you go, all right, let me find out who you, what you need. Oh, yep, here you go. I'm going to connect you with this person. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to send you over a brief agreement that just says for the first two transactions you guys do together, I get paid a $3,000 fee. There you go. There you go. Here you go. We got, there you go. Tamisha, she says, I have a builder looking for a partner to purchase land for a 23 square foot development. Now, Tamisha, you should be on the phone with 10 new people every single day. Imagine what your life would be like if you are on the phone with 10 new people every single day, specifically the people who have been filtered out, okay, by sub two and the people that have been filtered out by Gator. You have a higher level of people that are resourceful, people that are intentional about getting into the business. Imagine if you connected with 10 people every single day and you found out what they need and what they have. And you started making sure that you would ask them the question, if I could bring you blank and solve your problem, what would that be worth to you? Would you be okay if I made some money on that transaction, if I could find the person that could solve your problem? There you go. That is what a connector is. And it's interesting, I could talk about the connector I could create an entire education platform all about the connector because it's so diverse and the opportunity is so vast. The problem is people will get off this recording and they won't do anything about it. And then there's the 1%. Do you know why there's the 1% and the 99%? It's not because of political affi affiliation. It's not because of religious affiliation. It's not because somebody grew up in the right household and had the right answers and spoon fed things to them because there are a lot more people okay, that have been successful that started out with nothing than people who started out with something and became ultra successful. People have had it way worse than you and have turned it into way more than you have. The reason why there's a 1% and a 99% is because there's only 1% of people on the planet who actually take consistent action. That is it. There's only 1% of people on the planet that take consistent action and screw things up, by the way, marvelously. They make mistakes on a daily basis. Okay. Okay. They make mistakes on a daily basis, but they do it consistently. And so if you said, look, I don't have any money. Rainbow Disability Support says, Pace, can you help me in Australia? I cannot help you with real estate in Australia, but you can virtually do all of this from any country in the world. Just don't waste your time. I'm sorry I'm going to say this. Don't waste your time on other countries. I'm very sorry. The regulations, the governments, all those types of things, American real estate is the best thing to invest in in the freaking world. I don't know what's going on with China. I don't want to know what's going on with China. I, I don't know what's going on in Europe. I don't want to know what's going on in Europe. I don't know what's going on in Australia. I don't want to know what's going on in Australia. There is already more opportunity than I can physically tackle in my entire life just within four or five miles of my current house. That is how vast the opportunity of real estate and lending and finance and buying businesses and growing businesses and inserting myself into development, inserting myself into multifamily, single family. There are so many opportunities. I will never 
be able to help you outside of the United States. I am very sorry. It is not going to be my focal point. I am always going to focus on the 50 United States. That's it. Okay. There you go. I just answered. What if I want to invest in USA? Yes. If you are trying to do it virtually, I'm going to say this now for a second time. Okay. The older I get, the less interested I'm, I am in rehearsing what I said multiple times. Yes. If you are virtually investing into the United States, then yes, of course, this is for you. This is what this is all meant for. Okay. I'm going to say that again. There are more opportunities in just a four or five mile radius in my own backyard than I can ever encounter, ever tackle on my own in my entire lifetime. I don't have any time to think about any other country besides my own. That is it. Okay. So does everybody now understand what a connector is and how sneaky, amazing they are? I could tell you a couple of people's names that are at a very, very high level. Very, very, very high level. The gentleman who helped the Anaheim Angels come from California over to Las Vegas, Nevada. He is a connector. That's all he does for a living. He connects people all day long at very high levels. And I watch these, this guy operate in these rooms. This guy has graduated so far beyond, so far beyond real estate and finance. It is utterly ridiculous. Being a connector is an entire business model. Derek Barton, when did that happen? The Flamingo, bro, is being torn down and the Angels are moving to Vegas. I have it on firsthand um, authority from the guy who is a connector that made the entire thing happen. They're tearing down, well, I don't know what it's called, the Flamingo or the Tropicana, one of those stupid things. Okay. Kakodi, Pace, do you think the United States will default on debt? Guys, they've been saying this stuff since the 70s. Okay. Even if the United States is going to default on debt, what are you and I going to do about it? Nothing. We are nothing but pawns in the government's game. You don't have any power. You don't have any money, at least a significant amount of money to make any change. So the only thing to focus on is how can you get your hands on more money? Therefore, you can have enough power to change something or change your circumstances or maybe even change your place of residence. Worrying about what the government is doing is not going to make you any more money. That's it. Scott says, you mean the Oakland A's. You can tell how, how much I value sports. I think men watching other men play sports um, takes me away from my desire to play my sport, which is making money. Me watching baseball, watching football, watching even golf. I love golf. I, I, I love it. Every minute I spend doing it takes me away from my goals. And so I just don't have a lot of time to, to do it. I'm very sorry. I don't know the difference between the Anaheim Angels and the Oakland A's and all that kind of stuff. Actually, yeah, I do. I know the difference. No, it's, no, the Oakland A's, uh, what do I know? Okay, Paul says it's Oakland. Great. Congratulations, guys. You have ESPN. You know what I'm saying? The point is, who, who cares? The point is, a man who didn't have any money in the deal coerced another man to move a sports team to a different state by connecting two people together, and he will make over, I don't want to tell you the number. It's disgusting. Okay? Jake and Angel say sports must be their why. It could be. Okay? But for me, I'm not criticizing watching sports. I'm just saying there's a direct correlation in my life. I love watching sports. I love watching. I don't love watching sports. I hate football. I hate basketball. I hate baseball. It's just not my thing. Other people love it. Congratulations. I like golf, which holy crap has got to be the most boring thing in the world to watch. But I like watching somebody overcome a field of other opponents one on one and overcoming completely different elements every single time. Baseball, it's like, Okay, yeah, you got a baseball, the same size field every single time. Okay, great. I, whatever. We're not going to get into a sports thing because every time I get into a sports thing, there's always people that get super offended. So um, I just know that there's a direct correlation for every minute I spend in 
watching golf is a minute I'm taking away from what I'm trying to accomplish and what I'm trying to build. And so I don't spend a lot of time doing that. So I apologize for not knowing all the different uh, names of the sports teams. Okay. So here we go. This is great. Julie Daniel says, Pace, thank you for tonight. I'm a connector as long as I can remember. Just never thought to do it in this community, but that changed tonight. Google Sheet and Calls starting this week. Here's the problem, Julie. Here's the problem with everybody. You're not this person, but I'm just going to say this out loud. Most people are inconsistent with everything in their life. They're inconsistent with the way they love their wife. They're inconsistent with the time they allocate with their kids. They're inconsistent at um, how they work at their job. They're inconsistent at what they eat. They're inconsistent at what they watch. And more importantly, they're inconsistent at how they work their side hustle, which should ultimately turn into their full-fledged business. And so what I watch people, this is not you, Julie, This you're just, your conversation, okay, just made me think of this, it has nothing to do with you, okay? These 99 percenters, will always wonder how the one percent are doing it. While they're taking notes, while they're consuming more content, the, ni the 99 percent of people fall behind and they look for reasons and justifications for their failures. They're waiting for somebody to trip up so they can blame everybody else. The one percent of people are consistent every day they time block and they do the things that they don't want to do every day. Man, I've connected with 50 people this week and I haven't made a dollar. I've connected with 50 people this week and I haven't made a dollar. I'm going to give up. Or they'll even say subconsciously to themselves. This is the greatest thing of all time, by the way, Julie, because you are a one percenter. You're not a 99 percenter. I am so grateful for the challenges that a business brings me because every day I wake up and I'm interfaced with challenges with employees, challenges with cash flow, challenges with whatever, adapting to the changing climate of the market, whatever it may be. I realize that I'm not the only one that does. And while all my competitors and all the people that I'm trying to outperform in the business world, they're also in business. And they also have to interface with all the same exact challenges that I do. And so all I have to do is overcome those challenges and I win because they are not going to overcome those challenges because I can, de I can depend on human beings, 99% of human beings being inconsistent. In order for me to be in the 1%, I don't have to be smarter. I don't have to know more technique. I don't have to know all the answers. All I have to do is be consistent and I will automatically be in the 1%. That is it. The 1% makes $550,000 a year. That's the 1%. The 1% of the 1% makes $3 million a year. Interesting. So all I have to do is be consistent like the 1% of the 1% to make $3 million a year, easy. I have met so many idiots that are in, that are in the 1% of the 1%, but they are so good at being consistent. That's it. I was sitting down with dinner, like I told you the other night, sitting down with my student who's 22 years old. He'll make between five and $700,000 this year. And he told me yesterday, he goes, I didn't do any. I worked three hours yesterday. I worked three hours yesterday. I'm like, what is your problem, man? He goes, I'm, I guess I'm just comfortable never had this much money in my bank account. So now all of a sudden I see all this money in my bank account. I don't want to work. I'm like, then reinvest that money. Go buy a business. Go buy a piece of real estate. Go invest that business money. Get that money out of your account. Do not be comfort comfortable. The way I keep myself from being comfortable and becoming lazy is I purge all my capital and I invest my money as quickly as I possibly can so that my bank account hovers as close to zero as possible. I understand that consistency in all forms is the way to beat everybody. That's it. Okay. Uh, Mitchell says, we have a mobile home park. We are working in San Antonio, 400 units. Give me that deal. I will buy that deal. Okay. Well, guys, hopefully this has been helpful tonight. Nice 
50 minutes all on connecting. I spoke a little slower tonight. I had some people request me to speak slower. I had some people that to, uh, told me to use my whiteboard more, more frequently. So I hope tonight was good. And if I were you, here's the great thing. Pay attention to this and write this down. Pay attention to this and write this down. You will be on a live with me. Anywhere between 500 to 1,000 people will be on a typical live with me. And when I do big challenges, it's like three to 4,000 people on these lives. I get people that go, well, what about my competition? There's all these people that are learning the same thing that I'm learning. And I tell the, these people, I say, yes, but I can count on 99% of those people as much as I could, I could gamble a million dollars that says 99% of people that I teach the most unbelievable strategy and technique to because of their golden handcuffs, because of their broken mindset, because of whatever their victim mentality is, 99% of your so-called competitors will fall out before 30 days is up. Never worry about competition. Thank God every single day for the human condition, the human condition of inconsistency and comfort. Thank God for that. Say thank you so much for the temptation that I get to overcome while my competitors will succumb to the temptation of, of being comfortable and inconsistent. Because if you are, if you just simply beat that, you beat everybody at this game. Most of the deals I bought, a, actually I bought a deal. Uh, this was really, really great. Oh man, this is so good. I got to find this. Hang with me. I have a recording of a seller appointment yesterday. I was at a, a seller appointment and I asked the seller, how many, how many in, investors called you? You guys, tell me how many investors you think called this guy. He fired his agent and his listing became expired, an expired listing. How many times have I talked about finding expired listings as a wonderful strategy in this real estate game right now? How many times have I talked about expired listings in the last six months? You would think that every single seller is getting inundated with appointments and requests from investors saying, I saw your house went expired listing. Wonder if I could help you. Check this out. I'm going to have a pain come into right this on. house. It makes it so I can keep all $50,000. Anything else that I can help you overcome? Anything else that you're worried about? Let's just listen to this appointment. Take the question. I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm sure there's other stuff. It just wouldn't make sense for us financially to do right. it. But that, like the AC unit, if you told me pay the AC unit off 100%, I'd be like, no. Because I could use that 10 grand somewhere else, right? Make those payments from there. But while I'm. Yeah, that was late. Guys, yeah, it'll, be, it'll be nice. We live at that same apartment. Like, nice looking home. This property, Mark where, Taylor? Where, Taylor? Mark Taylor, which is where we're going. We live make financial sense for you guys. No, I need two more times, just a quarter of a point the rest of the year. I'm, I'm sure you're tracking the valuation of what you're thinking the market's going to go up. Why wouldn't the mortgage cover? Always. Always. Oh, last couple of recessions, they don't last six months. Yeah. That's a pretty big thing. Yeah. Houses, you want to see what we do? So we have a meetup every single oh, cool. so, yeah. Most everybody's admitting you. You know, it's like none of them are talking about real estate. Maybe your new friends because you love each other, including us. And so we drive around, we go to projects. Like, it's a hundred for, for a while now. Dude, it's the reason why you choose the job you went to. On the, on the team, do, do the addendum for the air conditioning unit. Okay. Sound good? Thank you. We're trying to sell as much as we can. There are people that have like seconds in their hand. This is like interaction seems too good to be true. Kind of be great. Check, yeah. check this out, by the way. Us know we'll have Give us like three days heads up. So I can get my guys pulled off a job and have a couple guys come over here and happy to help you out. That'd be fantastic. Okay, cool. This is like interaction seems too good to be true. Kind of. <laughs> I'm, I'm content with it. I'm happy. What's here's, here's the funny. So check this out. It's a 35 minute appointment. I went on yesterday with the seller, and as you could hear the seller, he says, "This seems too good to be true." 
This was yesterday. I was on this appointment yesterday. I bought this house yesterday. 2.9% sub two deal yesterday. Gorgeous home. Yesterday. And in the seller appointment, by the way, sub two, I will release that seller appointment to you guys in the Facebook group. You guys can go and, and look through it. But in this appointment, I asked the seller. I said, hey, when you fired your real estate agent, I'm sure that you got called by a hundred other investors. What do you think his answer was? Do you think his answer was, yeah, you're right. I was getting slammed by people. I was getting slammed by people. It's a new house, 2.9% interest. Seller wanted 10 grand to let us take over a $600,000 house. Here, pay me 10 grand, take my 2.9% interest rate. No one called. Ingrid Hernandez is correct. He says the only phone calls he got were other real estate agents trying to list the property. So when you guys tell me that it's too competitive, I have to remind you that you got you guys the per, I'm, I don't not you guys but the people that say those really ignorant dumb things are talking about when somebody is on a live with me let's say they're on a live or they're in some sort of education with me okay some sort of challenge this first day right here day 1 of learning the new information people on the other side learning and receiving this information are super excited I'm so pumped. I'm so excited. Man, I could give you the best strategies on planet Earth. And guess what happens? By day what? They have already given up. Day two. By day two, okay? I'm running, let's say I run a, a three-day challenge, which I do every single month, the elephant challenge. On day one, I will get probably about 3,000 people to show up. And on day two, I'll get 2,500 people show up. And on day three, I'll get about 1,800 people show up. And you, person, whoever you are, I don't know your name, but there's at least one of you watching this video now or in the future. You can just call yourself a dumb ass, okay? Because you think that human beings are going to be consistent and you're worried about competition? When somebody tells me they are worried about competition, you know what they tell me? They have just told me that they have never themselves made it past day one. Because when you make it to day two and you see that the amount of people went from 3,000 down to 2,400, and then you go from day two to day three on a challenge with me, and it goes down to 1,800 people, the people that are worried about competition are also the people that stopped watching after day one. They do not realize that the majority of human beings, the majority of human beings will fail to be consistent. And what did I say the other day on my Instagram? I said, most of you guys don't understand the definition of perfection. Okay? And what I said is the definition of perfection is this. Perfection is the pursuit. Oops, sorry. Perfection is the pursuit I'm sorry, let me make sure I spell this correctly. Perfection is the joyful pursuit of consistent failure through consistent action. Perfection is joyful is the joyful pursuit of consistent failure through consistent action.
This is literally the reason why most people fail. And so if you are going to be a connector, if you're going to be any one of the other avatars, by he for heaven's sakes, fail daily. That is what I do when I wake up. What am I going to fail at today? What am I going to learn today? What am I going to stumble on today? I'm not trying to say, what can I be perfect at today? What can I avoid? None of that. It is literally, what can I screw up today? What can I learn today? Every single day, even at 40 years old with thousands of friends and a million subscribers or more across multiple platforms, a TV show and all the things that you guys think is perfect. I am constantly seeking things to fail at every single day. Okay, so remind yourself of those things. I have talked about expired listings after expired listings after expired listings after expired listings. And I go into an appointment yesterday and ask the seller how many investor called you on your expired listing. And his answer was, uh, none. It was just real estate agents. Like no investors called you. He's like, well, you guys did. We were the only people contending on the house. And he says, here's the keys to my 2.9%. I'll give you guys the address for heaven's sakes. We've got it under contract. This is so unbelievable that people are like, I'm having a hard time getting my first deal. Well, I know what you just told me. You're saying I'm having a hard time staying consistent, which is also another way of saying I give up easily which is another way of saying, I think avoiding failure, I'm succeeding. But what's, what's true is I'm only succeeding at failure. When I hear your words and say, I'm having a hard time getting a deal, I only hear you are succeeding at staying inconsistent. That's it. All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Hopefully, you guys have a better respect for connectors. If you guys are in the sub two community, please go and do me a favor. I have worked my entire guts out to have the credibility, to have the capital, to have the resources, the intelligence, the experience, the human resources to build a community as powerful and as special as sub two is. Do not waste my gift to this world. Go into sub two this week. Make a goal of connecting with at least five students every single day track it on a list if you are in gator same thing in fact even more if you really think about gator nobody would have paid attention to me on gator and the strategy if i didn't put 10 years of consistent failure in over and over and over and over until i perfected a business model that did not exist before i was born on this earth I created an entire business model, rebranded something, made it made sense for a lot of people and thousands of people are making money doing it. If you are wasting my gift, then shame on you. My gift was actually creating a tribe of people that you could connect with and get way more benefits than just a gator deal. A gator deal is going to pay the bills. A gator deal is going to make you some money. But true wealth comes from having a powerful network. Do not waste my gift. All the time I take away from my wife and my kids and my hobbies and my travel and all of the things that I wish I could be doing as a person, I am giving it up to build something powerful for you guys. Do not waste it. Please, the greatest gift you can give me is to use the gift I gave you. And with that, I love you. I appreciate you. Thank you for trusting in me. Thank you for subscribing to the YouTube channel. Thank you for loving on my team and supporting everything that we do. Thank you guys so much. And I hope that you guys have a great night.